Number 63, assuming ideal solution behavior. What is the boiling point of a solution of NaCl in water if the solution freezes at negative 0.93 degrees Celsius? Okay. We only got one number. <laughs> we only got one number here, right? All we know is that this solution is freezing at 0.93 degrees Celsius. Now, if it is freezing at this temperature, this is called the freezing point or the freezing temperature. Generally, we, we use this as a TF. So we know that our final uh, freezing point for this solution is a negative 0.93 degrees Celsius. But somehow we have to take that value and go to the other end of the spectrum. We have to find out what it's going to boil at. So I say to myself, okay, what formula do I know that has to involve some type of freezing point? And, and there's only one formula, really. It's the freezing point depression formula. And that's this formula right here. Maybe we'll put it up here. Delta TF equals KF times M times I. Now, delta TF is your actual freezing point depression. Another way of saying this is the change in the freezing point. So change in freezing point or change in freezing temperature, it doesn't matter. The idea here is that we have to find the difference between the two freezing points. Now they only gave us one, right? They gave us the freezing point of the actual solution. We always compare that with the pure freezing point of the solvent. Now, in this case, we know that we're having a solution between NaCl and water. But the idea here is which one is the solute and which one is the solvent. Keep in mind that the solute is always being placed into the solvent. So by the wording here, they're saying that we have NaCl being dunked in the water. The solute always goes in the solvent. So the NaCl is the solute and the water is the solvent. And whenever we're dealing with pure substances, especially for the boiling point, you worry about your solvent. So we do have to know what the pure uh, freezing point was of the water. This is probably going to need to be memorized. I don't think your teacher or professor will tell you on you know a test or quiz what the pure freezing point of water is and for the boiling point so just know that your freezing point of water is always zero degrees celsius now keep in mind that this delta t value is always needs to be a positive value so we need to find that change which means the difference so just subtract these two values to get it to be a positive value if you do subtract them and you get to be a negative value, just make it positive. So that, that's, the whole, that's the whole deal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pure. And my pure for the water is 0 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to subtract it from the solution freezing point. And the solution freezing point, they told me, was a negative 0.93. And two negatives make a positive, right? Keep change, change. So my change in the freezing point is going to be the 0.93 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we know this one. Now the KF value, the freezing point depression constant, that's the KF, is solely reliant on the solvent. So it's also really important to know which one of these two is the solvent. This value, I did have to go into the textbook to find out this value. Generally speaking, they don't make you memorize these KFs. Maybe on a test or quiz, this KF would be given to you. But uh, for this one, we did have to go back and find it out. So the KF value for H2O is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality. So we know this value. So now we're getting close. Do we know the molality or do we know the I value? Well, this, just like we just said, is molality. And they didn't really give us that, right? They would have said we have a, a solution that's, you know, 3 molality or 3M. But I didn't see any values here. But that means that we should know the I value. The I value is called a Vant Hoff factor. Vant Hoff factor. 
And this discusses whether your solute, which is the NaCl in this case, whether your solute is an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. Now this comes from what type of compound it is. If it's covalent, it's a non-electrolyte. If it's ionic, it's an electrolyte. NaCl, which is the solute here, you got a metal and a non-metal. So this is ionic. And ionic is always going to be classified as an electrolyte. And for electrolytes, your I values can vary. They start with two. So you could have a two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The I value of one would be your covalent compounds. If this was a covalent molecule, your I value would be one, which means that it would be a non-electrolyte. But now how do we find out this number? Well, this just breaks down into how many ions NaCl will break down in solution. So if we had to break this down, the break would be between the Na and the Cl, right? We have Na as a plus one, it's in group one, and Cl minus the halides always have the negative one. And we have one Na in my NaCl, so I have one of these. I have one Cl, so that's one of these. The I value is going to be the addition of how many ions are in solution. So one plus one, we have an I value of two in this case. So for this, we know that this is going to be a two. Check. So basically we're solving for molality. Okay, so we'll go over here on the left-hand side. 0 0.93 equals that KF value that we looked up, 1.86, times x times 2. So first thing, maybe I'll just get that those two numbers together, 1.86 times 2. We get 3.72 times x. 1x by itself, so we divide by 3.72 on both sides. 3.72. Um, so we'll take the 0.93 and divide it by the 3.72. Okay, and that's the molality. So we found out that the molality equals 0 0.25 molality. Okay. But now, what has this got to do with anything for boiling point, right? Well, maybe the boiling point formula is very similar. And your boiling point elevation formula looks like this. It's very similar to the freezing point. Instead, it's got a delta T B, but it's the same exact idea. This is the change now in the boiling point. We don't know that. Equals the KB, the boiling point elevation constant for your solvent. Same exact solution here, which was H2O. So we did have to go into a textbook to find out now the KB of the H2O, which is 0 0.512 degrees Celsius per molality. Maybe I'll just move this out of the way just to make, make it look like, okay, there we go. Now, since we didn't change anything about the problem, the molality for freezing would equal the molality for boiling. So we know that we have a 0.25 molality formula or, you know, amount. And the I value is going to be exactly the same right? That doesn't change. It's still NaCl in water, so that I value equals 2. So in this case, we have the Kb. We found out the molality. We know the I value. We can find out that change. So let's see. Delta Tb equals the Kb, 0 0.512, times the molality that we just found out, 0 0.25, times the I value, which is 2, and let's find out that change. So 0 0.512 times the molality times 2. And I get a change of 0 0.256. Now notice how the change in the freezing point does not equal the change in the boiling point, even though it's the same solutions. 
So don't make that mistake of just saying, okay, well, the change in freezing has to equal to the change of boiling. Mm -mm. And now we're actually ready to find out the actual boiling point of the solution. Now keep in mind, now this is very important because when you're talking about boiling point, the boiling point of a solution will always be higher than the pure boiling point. You will never have a boiling point that's lower. For, so for the myth that you add salt and water to lower the boiling point, sorry, that's not correct. <laughs> you know, to speed, you know, to speed it up, oh, it will drop the boiling point. Actually, adding salt and water will actually, ro you know, raise the boiling point. And that's exactly what we're doing. Pretending that we're making pasta. Ooh, I love some pasta. Um, we're adding salt and water. It's actually going to raise that boiling point. But what's the actual number now? Well, it comes from the pure boiling point of water. This also should be something that you memorize. Chances are they won't give you the pure uh, value for water. So the pure boiling point, if we did not have a solution, is 100 degrees Celsius. But now in comes my change, and we have to make a decision. Are we going to add these two values together, or are we going to subtract? Keep in mind that that solution boiling point is always going to be higher. So what do you think? Yeah, we're going to have to add them. So 100, just to have it on the screen, plus this number, is 100.256. Now they did give me uh, the freezing temperature to the hundredths, so I'm going to give it back in the hundredths at, for sig fig purposes. So this would be 100.26. And that is the degrees Celsius, and that's the final answer. What is the boiling point? It's just going to rise a little bit higher, not too drastically, not even by, you know, one degree. It just rises a little bit, but it makes the water really, really, really good. Um, yeah, so, and uh, I guess a little tip or trick, if you're making, um, like, if you're making a pasta dish, uh, with, you know, like a one pot pasta dish where you boil water and then you add it to maybe, uh, you know, wh whatever you're doing with, you know, your vegetables or your, or, or your meat or anything, save that pasta water. I promise you save like maybe uh, a quarter of a cup of pasta water. Once you're done boiling your pasta and throw it into your, you know, one pot dish. Ooh, that's a game changer right there because it's starch, it's starchy water. And that's a really, really good flavor. But anyway, that was a little bit cooking, <laughs> cooking with Kiki, uh, cooking with Christina. Kiki is my, um, I guess, nickname. But anyway, thank you so much. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys. And uh, good luck on your test quizzes. Make sure that you know the freezing point and boiling point of water. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye.